ready to roll on this Stronic 5 preview show. So good to have you with us, everybody. Jason Blewett catching up with all of you once again from our XBTV studios here at glorious and beautiful Gulfstream Park. Hard to believe in a way that November is basically at the midway point. And with that in mind, we've got a new weekend, a new Friday with the Stronic 5 upon us. But you know it, we got to take a step back. And boy, they were betting with both fists and money, 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 recapping week number six in the Stronic 5 pay. Out. How do you like just under 18,000 bucks once again? I think the biggest price in the sequence paid around 30 bucks, give or take. You didn't have to align the constellations there, and you got over 17,800 bucks there if you had all five winners, and I hope you did. Now, as we fast forward into this new Stronic 5 coming up on Friday, November 16th, we will indeed kick things off with leg A. Race number eight on November 16th at good old Laurel Park. 3.52 p.m. is the start time, and that's how you make your wager. You ask for Laurel, race eight, Stronic five, and off and running you will be. From start to finish, got a couple of races uh, from Laurel, almost a tag team, if you will, from Gulfstream Park West as well, and we go full circle, wrapping it up with the fourth race on the uh, synthetic at Golden Gate Field. About 80 minutes from start to finish, still a good amount of action spread throughout the five races in this week's Stronic Five, and once again, knowledge is power in life and certainly in thoroughbred racing, and we've got you covered free of charge, which is pretty awesome, over at GulfstreamPark.com with those free PPs. When you combine the big payoffs we've had with the 12 percent takeout I think it's a wager you just can't go wrong with I think many of us in this day and age horse players that is very price sensitive 12 percent takeout and once again how does fifty thousand dollars sound we'll seed the pool with a cool 50 G's into the Friday November 16th Stronic 5 that begins in race 8 at Laurel Park and speaking of Laurel little GPW and let's not forget Albany California out there at Golden Gate Fields Let's bring in the boys. We've got our, our preview team here on the Stronic 5 show. Some of the sharpest minds here at the Stronic Group, including Matt Dinnerman in your bottom left at Golden Gate Fields, my good pal Ron Nicoletti over at Gulfstream Park West, and the one and only Stan Salter up there at Laurel Park. And Stan, you're in the hot seat, my friend, off the bat. The pressure's on you. We've got a couple of big fields on the dirt in the Stronic 5 secrets from Laurel Park. And that'll be the starting point as we head on up from where I stand to Maryland City, Maryland, Laurel Park. And what do you got for us, Stan? It's good to have you on the show, of course. And what are we doing here in leg A of the Stronic Five? Well, thanks a lot, Jason. A big 12-horse field to kick off this week. Stronic Five here at Laurel Park. Race 8, is, it's a exci very exciting race. A first-level allowance race. Optional claiming 50000 for two-year-olds going seven furlongs. And your morning line favorite in this race is 9-2. to two, So a great betting race. You're going to get a good price, I think, here in the first leg of the Stronic Five. I think you have to go three, four deep. I have the six beyond the victory on top. 9-2 to two morning line for trainer Mike. Mike Trombetta, two-year-old Colt by to honor and serve. Trevor McCarthy will ride. McCarthy was aboard last out the race October 17th at Delaware Park. I think we have video of that race. That was the first time he had blinkers on the main track. A very good second that day with a 68 buyer. He didn't, he didn't break very well. He bobbled at the start, but he overcame that. Finished well in that race October 17th. Since then, he's been working well up there at Fair Hill. Two nice work since then up there at Fair Hill. McCarthy back named to ride the six beyond the victory. So that's my... That's my top pick. My second pick, the three, that would be Grand at 6-1. to one. Two year old Colt by Power Broker for trainer Dale Capuano. Weston Hamilton will ride this horse as well season. He comes out of the same Beyond the Victory race. He was uh, third behind Beyond the Victory. So I like my uh, top two coming out of the same race uh, Beyond the Victory. That would be Grand. Another horse maybe to consider at a decent 8-1 to one price in this first leg, the 10 Sunman. For our leading trainer, Claudio Gonzalez, this two-year-old Colt, a broken vow. He's won two in a row, including last out going around a ground. He has early speed. He gets Kevin Gomez, who's won on this horse before. I think the 10 Sunman Live at 8-1. to one. Another horse to consider, the 11 Mount Travers at 5-1. to one. Gets first-time blinkers today for trainer Arnaud Delacour. But my top pick at 9-2 to two here in the first leg of the Stronic Five, number six, Beyond the Victory.
Well, let's hope the name Stan is appropriate with certainly some uh, victory in the mix there, but again, a dozen in that opening leg of the Stronic Five on Friday, November 16th. Now, we will have some turf, and I promise you we'll get Stan back in the mix here, but hold your horses for just two seconds. We got to bring it on home to South Florida. I'm at Gulfstream Park, our good buddy Ron Nicoletti. The legendary Ron Nicoletti is over about eight miles west over at GPW, Gulfstream Park West. They are in their penultimate week of the fall meet. And, Ronnie, as we send it to you, you've got nine horses here in leg B to choose from on the dirt. How do you say it? Hey, Jason. Yeah, uh, you know, let's take a look at the field for leg B of the Stronic Five. And it's, uh, as you mentioned, a field of nine. And I just went with the my selections in the race with the one, the six, and the two. And I really had some interest in the number one, Bull Gratz, who's uh, now listed as a gelding. He's dropping to the $35,000 level. And he really he showed promise sprinting against maiden special weight competition before the layoff, uh, which includes a well-meant second-place finish. Now, we're going to backtrack all the way to September 2017. We're going to take a look at Bull Gratz's performance. Now, this was under maiden special weight conditions, and I thought this horse ran exceptionally well in this race. He just fought on and fought on. Now, of course, this was September 2017, but the, the horse did come back in April, so we'll watch him finish up here I thought he ran exceptionally well so I put this race in my memory bag he then comes back and he follows that with a chase and phase performance in April behind a repeat winner called Sided, who went on to finish third in the carryback stakes uh, the trainers Terry Pompey she's been on fire all summer long and has this uh, a sophomore trainings really nicely for the return now, the other horses I wanted to use in the race had some interest in. We're going to go to the number six accountant, Q, stepping up to competition. This horse, first start, he dueled for the lead in that race, and he finished second to a repeat winner called Dr. Harlan. It was a 20 maiden test at Gulfstream. Another horse that hasn't been around since September, but I think this is a good spot for this horse to come back to the races. Now, you're looking for a little bit of a long shot. I threw the two and just busted. This one now in the Larry Pilati barn. He debuts locally at this $25,000 level. He faced New York State bred competition on both dirt and turf with limited success, but I like the connections. Miguel Vasquez, you're looking for a little bit of a long shot. You go with the New York bread. My selections, once again, one, six, and two. All right, a three-horse spread there for Mr. Ronnie there in leg B of the Stronic Five. And boy, have I seen quite a few New York breads in my time by Boston Stones. Heck of a sire. I hope that horse runs well beneath Miguel Vasquez. Promised you some more. Stan, Stan the man at Laurel Park. And we'll head back on up for leg C as we are just about at the halfway point with two down and three to go. Big field, another bulky field of a dozen ready to rock and roll in Laurel Park's ninth race. And Stan, as I send it back to you, I'm wondering, just how key are post positions in these two-turn dirt routes at Laurel Park? Uh, well, it, it's a nice 10-horse field here. It's uh, never won, well, haven't won two races in six months, never won five lifetime, claiming 5,000, going a mile and the 16th on the main track. I go with the speed horse, maybe lone speed on top. The eight Pleiadian's going to have to clear from the outside, but you get Carol Sedania, one of our top journeyman riders around here, riding this very well-seasoned eight-year-old for trainer Kieran McGee. This horse has won two in a row off the claim. Kieran claimed this horse for 5,000 back in late August, won two in a row up there at Delaware. He's an eight-year-old, made over 362,000 and eight Team-time winner. He's won two races at Laurel Park. He's a 12-time winner at this mile and a 16th distance. So he knows the game. He's going to have to break sharp and clear from the outside. We have the race uh, last out October 10th at Laurel at, at Delaware. Let's show you that he galloped that day. He was in front by three turner for home, one by nearly five lengths that day on an uncontested lead. So he may, if he clears from the outside, which I think he will with Carol Cedeno, I think he'll be lone speed. The, the nine, Rumlin Kyle, a good second behind Plady and last out. They come out of that same race up there, Delaware. Uh, Johan Rosado, the bug boy on Rumlin Kyle. So you're getting eight pounds off of the nine rumbling pile. He's getting an eight-pound weight difference from the eight Pleiadian. So he's going to be right there early on with the, the eight Pleiadian. He's not going to let Pleiadian get too far ahead. I think 
Drumlin. Kyle gets a nice forwardly placed trip. He'll be right there at 6-1, to one, so I think you have to use the 8 and the 9. The favorite in the race to 3, Mythos at 4-1. to one. This horse is coming out of an open nickel try last out. Was an okay fourth that day. Rare Eagle, who was third, would come right back to win. Richard Silliman claimed the seven-year-old, who's a three-time winner at Laurel Park, waited the 30 days, they're right back in for 5,000, an easier race, a beaten 5,000. So Mytho's going from the open nickel to a beaten 5,000. He'll be tough in there with Victor Carrasco. I think, I think you go three, eight, nine in uh, the third leg here of the Stronic Five. It's, it's a challenging uh, beaten nickel, 10-horse field here. I, I like the speed on top, though. All right, a couple of handfuls there in leg C of the Stronic Five, and boy, there are some battle-hardened, tough veterans. We love those older geldings. However, we'll switch from horses that have run quite a few times to a more untested field as we start to round the far turn here in our Stronic Five preview show. We've only got two races to talk about, including race number nine, the Friday finale at Gulfstream Park West. And again, from those older geldings to a much more light, lighter race crew of two-year-old fillies on the turf, we'll send it on back over to GPW. Ronnie, what do you got for us in the ninth at Gulfstream West? Thanks, Jason. Nothing like two-year-olds on the turf going seven and a half furlongs. Let's take a look at the field of leg D of the Stronic Five. And I uh, really like this field. You can see it's uh, got a bunch of also eligibles in it, but a full field. I'm going to go with the one, two, and six. I'm stuck on the rail uh, today, but I'm going to tell you why I like the number one in here, and that's a secret of life. This one's going to depart from the inside after dueling throughout. We're going to go back and revisit his last race. Boy, he was really good in this race. He just went on and on. We'll be showing you that video in just a second and he's just uh, incredibly game in this race you'll see him he's the number three this day and he's in there and he's fighting to the wire and he comes and he's, he's cruising now and here comes a horse closing but what you're going to see right when they get to under the shadow of the wire the three on the inside the secret of life gets really bopped hard by the horse on the outside, the eventual winner. Uh, now, I just thought that uh, that performance, he might have won it. He got really hit hard in that race. So a little bit of a, of a trip note there for Secret of Life. It's leading trainer Marcus Vitale, and he's got apprentice Romero Mirage in the saddle. So I really like that horse. I thought he ran well. He was 8-5 to five that day. He's got to make amends. Now, the other couple of horses I have some interest in, love the name of this horse, number two, Narrow, Narrows Bridge, who is the daughter of Venezuela. You get the... Uh, Bridge of reference there. Dave used locally for Wesley Ward, so you got to pay attention. First start, she surrendered a late lead. She was second. That was against a $30,000 maidens. It was at Ellis Park about August 17th. Uh, Wesley Ward really solid with this type of layoff. 20%. He's got journeyman Eduardo Nunez in the saddle. Then I got number six, bright side of the road, dropping to the 20 level and lures the services of red hot jock Paco Lopez. Showed some speed week and late. That was a pair at the $35,000 level. I bet you anything this one was part of the pace scenario. So my selections in leg D, one, two, and six. All right, thanks again, Ronnie, and a, a good move and certainly a worthwhile note picking up Paco Lopez taking the call on that Larry Bates horse in the uh, middle of the pack. It's been a, a solid November, to say the least there, and that's an understatement for jockey Paco Lopez. First ever Breeders' Cup victory in the sprint with Roy H., and we last saw him Saturday, last Saturday, on a pretty big stakes-laden card at GPW, winning five stakes. So that's Paco in race number nine, Friday afternoon, at GPW. Well, it is four down and one to go, and no Stronic Five would be complete without a trip out to the West Coast. Golden Gate Fields, to be a bit more specific, where we have track announcer and our own racing analyst, Matt Dinnerman, standing by. Thank you, Jason. And the last leg of the Stronic Five wager, certainly a tough puzzle to decipher here. A full field of 12 in this spot. This is a starter allowance race on the Tapita. They're going five and a half furlongs. Really, you could make an argument for a lot of runners in here. I think this is a race where you probably have to go deep in this spot. We've got the morning line favorite. King Eddie coming off a real nice 12-5 win is protected now for high percentage trainer Jonathan Wong. I'm going to talk about him in just a little bit, but I'm going to go to the outside, all the way out there, post 12. 
Cannonball coming from the Ed Mocher Jr. Stable. This horse has run his past two races at the starter allowance condition. We're going to take a look at the October 26th race very shortly. He was going six furlongs at this condition last time out. And this horse down the stretch, as you can see right here, came with a nice rally. Only lost by a length and a quarter to a nice horse named Woodsack from the Andy Mathis Stable that has some nice back class to him. This horse, Cannonball, coming really made a nice move down the lane, came on, galloped out well, cuts back a half furlong for this run. I think Cannonball Cummins is going to be tough if he runs his best race. There's plenty of speed for this horse to just sit right off of, get a beautiful stocking trip, has some decent works on the page since that last run. So I'm going with number 12, Cannonball Cummins, as the top pick. The runner right to his inside, Dancing Harbor, has a good amount of appeal here at a decent price for the Frank Lucarelli barn. And I'm thinking Dancing Harbor can get the job done in this spot. Now you look at Dancing Harbor, this is a horse that's been facing a lot tougher company. He's dropping in class here. He faces easier in this large field. I think this horse can really do some damage here for trainer Frank Lucarelli. He comes off a fifth place finish to Annie's Candy, who's projected to run in the Oakland Stakes this weekend, in fact. So I'm thinking Dancing Harbor dropping in class from allowance to this starter allowance condition has some major, major appeal at a price. Number nine, Sound Logic. He's another horse I'd like to use. This horse just broke his maiden at the main special weight level over this track for trainer Billy Morey is now in the starter allowance race. It's interesting he's not in a straight allowance. Billy Morey opting him to run against a little bit easier. He has to give some experience away. A lot of horses in here have run many times as opposed to Sound Logic, who's only run four times in his career, but I give Sound Logic a look first time against winners. And then number three, King Eddie, the one we talked about is the morning line favorite. He's number three for the Jonathan Wong stable. It took him a while to win at the $12,500 condition. He put it all together last time out, came home sharply. It was his best run to date since coming here to Northern California a couple months ago. And I think King, King Eddie is on the improve. So look for King Eddie to make a splash in this spot number three, but I'm going to try to beat him with the outside runner, Cannonball Coming number 11, Dancing Harbor, who has some appeal, and also number nine, Sound Logic, as well. That's the last leg of the Stronic Five Wager this week. And Jason, hopefully, we can get lucky to end this sequence. Well, thanks very much, Matt. And this is the part of the show I like to call the Stronic Five Home Stretch Recap. We will give you a little live look, some real time action here as far as one, two, threes, and top selections because we covered a lot of horses and some pre scratch 53 entries scattered throughout the sequence. And that 53 doesn't include also eligibles and main track onlys. One turf race in the mix. We've got three on the dirt and one on the synthetic at Golden Gate Fields. The only rule with our next graphic, got to keep it below a $100 bill. We've got our Stronic 5 All-Star ticket, $72. Again, a $1 minimum and no singles. We have yet to have a Stronic 5 a week here on the preview show where we've had or felt comfortable enough standing alone with just a single horse. I think that underscores just how deep and competitive and fun these races are. Uh, free PP, speaking of that competitive nature of the Stronic 5 races in the sequence, we'll keep you covered. And those PPs, by the way, will be posted uh, mid-afternoon on Wednesday once the official odds and all that stuff comes out. So definitely take a look there. And $50,000 to guarantee. That is a life-changing score, a good chunk of change. And when you consider, for just a dollar gets you in, into the pool, 50 G is certainly noteworthy. And again, very price conscientious. You've got the 12% uh, takeout in the Stronic 5. And needless to say, that is why this bet has paid so handsomely for those lucky few who have had all five winners each week. Once again, race number eight, Laura Park, Friday, November 16th. That is leg A. That is the starting point. And you ask for race eight at Laurel Park to get involved with the Stronic Five pool. And I hope by this time next week, you're still in a position where you're perhaps looking over and counting your winnings. On that note, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks again for joining us here from our XBTV studios at Gulfstream Park. And we'll see you next time right here on our Stronic Five preview show. Thank you.